It's Bourbonite, or should I say Rye Night. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And here we go again. The best fries we tried in 2022. Now, Sarah, our 10 best bourbons of 2022, that video is already out. That's you can right. Click somewhere up here to go and watch that uh, if you like. This is the first time that we took the rise out separate. Yes, and we won't dig into our full methodology on how we score the rise and everything here um, because you can go watch that in the bourbon video list. Yeah, um, but spelled out pretty just well. to give you a summary, like it had to be things that we had access to. We blind scored them and you know took the average of those scores. This again is only things that we had access to try blind, and because it's blind, there's no way that we can know price or availability and take that into consideration when we're judging and ranking these things. Sure. So some of them will be more available, some of them won't. Right, uh, now we are doing this list slightly different because of feedback on our 10 best uh, bourbons of 2022. Some of those were highly allocated, you know, as, as they are, again, we did that blind or low bottle counts, whatever it may be. So we kind of took that into account for this one. So we're gonna have two versions of our top five mm -hmm. list here, okay? So the first one, which we're getting ready to do first, <laughs> is we're going to adjust for low bottle availability. So we kind of set that at a thousand bottles. And that's still really low for, right, like the yes. general audience. But if it's under a thousand bottles, and Which some of these releases tend to be. Two, two of them in our top five are. Then we don't think, even though it's still limited if it's 2,000 or 4,000 bottles, we just don't think under a thousand bottles, 99.99999% of you are never gonna be able to see it. But we still think it's worth saying, hey, look at this company. Exactly, so after we do our adjusted list, we will do the full-fledged, this was how we best scored these things blind from Rise in 2022, because we don't want to leave those people out just because they had, you know, low bottle counts. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it with this first adjusted list with number five. Michter's 10 year single barrel rye. Yeah, so starting off with uh, also sort of a rare one. So rare that there wasn't a 10 year version of the bourbon this year. This was the only mm -hmm. 10 year from Michter's was the rye released. Right. And also a little bit pricey, 185 uh, retail. It is pricey. But that's how we're kicking off this list. I mean, <laughs> it, again, we did it blind. Yeah. The availability and price was not a factor in our judging. So it feels good to know that if it is something that has to be hunted and is more expensive, then mm -hmm. I do put it towards the top of the list. Uh, for some nose notes, I put outdoorsy and woodsy, a uh, little Irish spring. For the taste, I said high rye, low proof, earthy finish, little dry, and cedar. Yeah, I definitely got those herbal, earthy, tea, citrusy notes and cedar on that as well. Now we said, High rye, low proof. It is lower proof. It's what, 80? 92.8. 92.8, sorry, Mictors, 92.8. The mash bill is, the ratio is not stated, but they have said that it's closer to a 51% rye than it is like a 95.5, so mm -hmm. there we go. Old Ezra, seven year full proof. So now here's a, here's, you know, going from 185 to 80 bucks. This is more of right, a Right, way of more a of a value. And at 18,000 bottles put out there, again, that's not a huge, huge release, but it is bigger than a lot of other limited releases. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually had it because someone brought it to our fall meetup and we tasted it and I was like, oh, that's good. The hob goods, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, that's how it made it in here. But yeah, 80 bucks. It's a blend of two MGP mash bills, the 51% rye and the 95.5. Rye? <laughs> I got hung up there. 114 proof, seven yeah. years. I mean, 80 bucks, you know, that's a fair price point. It's Especially you know, on the higher age, end, yeah. but again, it's, it's still under 100 bucks, so appreciate that. So I definitely had some interesting notes on this one. On the nose, a raspberry filled donut with like a toffee butterscotch uh, topping. Yeah. And some, I said French oak, caramel, butterscotch, and berries like a strawberry raspberry jam with a hint of pepper on the palate. We were in the, in the same ballpark. Uh, actually, exactly. I said raspberry filled donut. I think it's because um, when we were tasting, I said raspberry filled donut. Yeah, and I was There's like, no way the two of I'm us. I'm taking that. Said, I'm taking that. We usually don't talk during it, but when something weird like that pops up. Like it raspberry just, filled donut. It just escapes. Caramel, sweet, sugars um, on the palate. I said fruity, bubble gum. I remember that. Hmm. Uh, bubble gum, like strawberry, raspberry gum. Clove spice builds on the back end. And I, I wrote finished for sure. It's not. It's not. Uh, 
Well, you know, you taste a raspberry donut in a rye and, and think that there's not something I else going on. I that... thought that there was like a French oak element with some <laughs> wine finish because of that strawberry raspberry. Yeah. That just goes to show you like when you when you do it blind, you never really know. That's one I recommend like if you can find it that you do try it at least because it's just so interesting. It's, it's kind maybe, of funky. Maybe the most interesting on our top five. Mm, I don't know, maybe. Old Forester Single Barrel Rye. Yes. Uh, 131 high point proof. one proof. Yeah, a high proof for one. a rye. That's yes. really high for a rye. Yes. And this one was. Yes. Was hefty. <laughs> it has that. Uh, it comes from the fabled warehouse K, like the uh, the, the the 114 you know series. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the warehouse K edition. Seventh floor, seventy five dollars. But again, we little barely little rye. were but able to find this. We did find it at a store. Let's just get into some some notes here. I said more bourbon smells. Mm. Uh, that might have been because of the the high proof. I don't know, but I said fruit, some banana, oak, earthiness, and sweet. And then on the palate, I wrote fruity. Cherries, bananas again, high proof, <laughs> yes. I wrote Old Forester single barrel question <laughs> mark. Then I wrote oak and sugars, chocolate, coffee grounds. Yeah, I feel like that banana note kind of is like, oh, hey, what is this? Mm -hmm. uh, I also put banana bread with uh, dark chocolate and chocolate chips on the nose and a light, like little sprinkle of cinnamon. Pretty much the same notes on the palate, but I also wrote, holy hell. <laughs> Powerful, <laughs> bold, dark, and coating. And on the finish, I got some coffee bean, dark chocolate, and a little bit of earthiness, but I had a long okay. finish for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Well, before we break into our top two, we want to hit pause and tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where I'm wearing this rye t-shirt. It says rye or die on the back. You know I had to wear it for this episode. It's where you can also get our hats, all of our Glen Cairns, including the cut crystal Glen Cairns. Uh, hats, hoodies, uh, bottle cut candles, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash itsbourbonite and join our community for as little as one buck a month. And that is where we release discounts to certain tiers for our merch uh, yep. after the episode exclusive. Yes. Barrel picks and more. Yeah, go on a barrel pick if you like. All right, we'll be right back. Saints Alley, the Nobleman. So this is this is an interesting one. It's mm. also MGP and Iron Root Republic's rye that's finished in a Tokaji. Uh, barrel. Let's see, there's 2,400, so it made it above our cutoff, arbitrary cutoff list for this episode, but that, you know, that is that is kind of limited. Low. Right, but to be fair, you walked into Total Wine one day and it was sitting there, yeah. you know, just ready for the taking. In our area, like this is, again, coming from Texas, it's Liquor Hound collabing with Iron Root and mm -hmm. they're sourcing MGP and blending their own stuff. Yeah. It came all the way from there to here, which we're usually the last to get stuff. A lot of times, yes. So to be able to, for you to have been able to walk into Total Wine and just find it on the shelf, I think, you know, makes it fairly available. 2400, not that many, but what I really think is interesting is that it's the source blended finished rye, which all those things we know drive price up, and it's still 80 bucks. Yeah, 80 um, bucks. I think this one is so fun. Like, yes. I gotta be honest, the Saints Alley line is one of my favorite things that I've seen in the past few years. They Their Armagnac uh, finished with the Herald bottle is was one thing, and then this came out, and I'm like, wow. I really think that even if you can't find this particular release, that Saints Alley is definitely a company to watch. Yes. Um, or a brand Iron to Root watch, Republic. and Iron Root is yeah. a company to watch. Yeah, this is kind of one of my Cinderella stories for the <laughs> entirety of 2022. It was fun to watch. Bourbons yeah. and Rise. This was mm -hmm. a really fun one uh -huh. to score. Because uh -huh. I will say it's not like it got completely stomped either like for me in scoring it no. was not far off the heels of number one not far i think that really says a lot again at 107 proof and 80 bucks especially once you hear what number one is but let's be honest you might kind of say oh this is oh this is interesting the number one in like more obtainable if you can get one of those 2400 and let's make note of that chad though because isn't that the reason why we do this in the first place mainly to see like when things like saint sally that are more affordable uh come in so closely to what's at number one mm -hmm. uh, a few quick uh notes on this one sarah on the nose i wrote caramel orange honeysuckle a little bit of cinnamon like in a red hot way but but good like a candied spice on the palate i pretty much said the same notes on the nose a semi oily mouthfeel Finish was medium long with a nice hug, spice and the caramel linger. For the palette, I said pine and crisp, pepper, uh, lemon and tea mm. on there. I, I really liked it. Like the scores reflect liking it, but I didn't have a didn't have a book to write about this no? one. But no. But will we about our number one? Let's see what it is. Thomas H. Handy. 
All right, no one's surprised. If you watched the Buffalo Trace episode well, where we did the BTAC. If you, okay, if you watched the BTAC episode, I then you're said not then, surprised. Right, I said there that I like this year's Thomas H. Handy better than the William Leary Weller, which is kind of an upset for me mm -hmm. historically. It is a really good rye. I expect it to be a really good rye. Yes, but Thomas H. Handy is a lot of times the fifth place prize for those searching BTAC. A, a lot of times people will put the SAS 18 because mm. it's 18 years it's 18. Age, age stated and, and this is, well, it's six years, four months. Uh, but not, it's not, not 18. Not age stated on the bottle, but it, that's it's six years and four months. 130.9 proof. I wouldn't say that we agree with it being like the fifth place prize, but normally we're like, yeah, it's good, but a lot of times it can be just a little too hot or whatever. Mm. But in 2022, we're like, no, hold up. Like I put it third, you put it second, uh, and it was really close to WLW in, in mine, but I put the WLW just a little bit over it. But you know, spoilers, WLW came in fifth. Uh, in our Which again, best bourbons. It's still the best things bourbons. that we've tasted all year. Yeah. I expect to see it up there. It's not a surprise. Yeah. I expect to see this up there. Mm -hmm. It's also not a surprise for me to see Thomas H. Handy come in first. I didn't know it was going to come in first, but it doesn't shock me. But to see the other things that came in the top five that mm -hmm. aren't, that maybe, yes, okay, they had smaller distributions, but they're not these big names, highly sought after. You have to get in a lottery to find them. They're more attainable yeah. uh, and definitely lower price. I mean, we had a handful that were $80 dollars or less and if you are going with msrp on this one this one should be 99 dollars now you know <sighs> disclaimer 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 very we know few people not. will see it for retail but some in controlled states and nice liquor stores will uh let's do some notes i said on the nose i said sharp spicy maybe high proof <laughs> uh, citrus zest and bright then on the palate i said a citrus snap with lemon and slight Ooh. dill big hug zesty wood lemon tea with pine soaked in it whoa okay uh, i pretty much agreed with you on the nose uh, with the citrus zest some allspice chocolate and berries on the palate i wrote rich chocolate berry i also wrote a lot on this one uh, allspice again with the citrus zest spicy oak nice mouthfeel again that zest and oak linger with the berries and some spice uh along with chocolate on the finish and a long finish at that. So that is our top five list adjusted for hyper allocated slash tiny distributions. There you go. Those, I, ad those adjusted out. These two that we took out have under a thousand bottles uh, produce of it, but we don't want to short them because blind, they did come in. Uh, it'll knock a few that we've already talked about out mm -hmm. of the top five. So let's get in to the official, not adjusted for bottle size, top five. Now coming in at number five, we've already talked about it. It's the Old Forester single barrel. Number four is where it gets different. So number four is... Hemingway Rye. This one is pretty interesting. At 972 bottles uh, produced, it's just under that threshold. $150, so it is pricey. It is pricey, but it comes with three signatures and it comes in a box. Uh, a little bit about that. He loves it, the box. Yeah, $150, uh, but Jacob Call, who is the former master distiller of Green, Green River, River Distillery, who has now been announced as the new master distiller of Western Kentucky Distilling, uh, he's one of those three uh, signatures on there. Mm. Uh, so what they did, it's a blend of straight rye finished in rum seasoned Ooh. Oloroso sherry barrels. So you do have, well, you have a finished barrel, but that finished barrel has also been seasoned mm -hmm. uh, with other spirits. Uh, so it's a second barreling finished with another component. But I guess for me, I think this one's notable because you know, it's a, new, a newer release. I had never heard of this before. Mm -hmm. And for it to come in number four blind, especially up against, you know, it just beat Old Forester Single Barrel. So like Rye, which, you know, one of these big heavy hitters for this to come in at a hundred proof and score ahead of it. Uh, it had some really great flavors. I think that's noteworthy to look at that brand mm -hmm. for the future yes. and just to see what someone who's new to the scene is doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's get into some uh, flavor notes here, starting with the nose. I said oak, chocolate, butterscotch, cherry, orange, and cinnamon. So some pretty standard things. Mm -hmm. uh, sip, same fruitiness on the palate, approachable, some oak and barrel influence and a delicate mouthfeel with a zing of spice on the finish and the heat lingering with cinnamon and pepper. Okay. Uh, I said more of a bourbon nose, darker barrel notes. Then on the palate, I said oaky, woodsy, 
Uh, not much heat or rye on here, slight dill and tea, but ultimately I really liked how it all came together. Mm -hmm. I, think I think maybe some of those secondary, secondary barrels were, were taking out like some of the, the heat and also with it being uh, 100 proof and some of the rye elements. Just pretty, one to look out for. Pretty enjoyable. So in this new adjusted list, the number three spot goes to the Saints Alley, the Nobleman, which makes a new number two, which is... Blackwood Toasted Rye. Yeah, so 116.4 proof. This is batch one. Um, it uses their signature toasting process and it is a 95.5 rye. This is the lowest bottle wise though. Yeah, 620 bottles that's distributed between three states. Mm -hmm. uh, ours being one of them, so we were able to get one. Pretty hard to find for most people who are watching this video. And that's why we took it out. That is why we <laughs> took it out. Um, but, you know, it is their first release and it is only currently being distributed to three states. So potentially something to look out for as distribution increases. To make it into the number two, yeah. True, but it is $160, so mm -hmm. it is up there in the price. All right, let's go to some notes. Starting with the nose, I said nice, herbal, pepper, earthy, antique wood pile. That's Ooh. always interesting. <laughs> Uh, on the palate, the first thing I wrote was, that's a 95.5, and I was right. Uh, mm -hmm. Cashew nuttiness, herbal, mint, higher proof, heat, dry oak. On the nose, I wrote mint chocolate, pepper, herbal, with parsley, in question mark. <laughs> uh, a wood pile, yeah, I definitely felt that. Mm. Uh, mint chocolate still on the palate with some nuttiness, that herbal carrying through rich, bold, intense pepper, nutmeg, and dry wood. On the finish, I wrote intense, bold herbal spice flavors, the chocolate lingering with some oak and a long finish with a nice Kentucky hook. There you go. Yeah. So of course, you know, we, we gravitate towards this nutty rye, right? <laughs> right. Of course we like it. Um, yeah. And again, I, I think it's a really fun one that we tried 116.4 proof, uh, something that is new to the scene, mm -hmm. excited to see it. But for me, in this whole lineup, I think uh, there's two main stories for me. The first one being the Saints Alley. What are the headlines? Okay, the Saints Alley, yes. For I me, agree. I think the Saints Alley is the headline of this list. You know, the fact that it, it at 80 bucks from, you know, a smaller distillery mm -hmm. out of Texas can come up and, and hang with these top three. Yeah, is, absolutely. It's pretty respectable. What do you call um, the second story? I call the second story the one that was next on the list, right? So we did the ah, top five adjusted, yes. and then when we did it unadjusted, that gives you the top seven scored. Well, we should just say real quick that even in this non-adjusted list, obviously the Thomas H. Handy is still number one. Yes, So that we already talked go. about that. But yeah, back to the adjusted list. So now that we've added in these two that we removed for limited distribution and limited bottles, mm -hmm. that gives us the top seven. What I think is very noteworthy is what would have come in next. At number eight, what did come in. What did come at in next. At number eight, which is is Pikesville Rye. Pikesville Rye, which <laughs> is one of the- We threw a staple in. Yeah, um, and, I, and I, I guess we didn't mention that at the top of the episode, but like the bourbon episode where we put in five everyday, usually on the shelf staples is what we call them. We put three rye staples uh, into this one. One of them being the Pikesville Rye. We also had the Rare Breed Rye and Knob Creek Rye. Mm -hmm. So Pikesville, which is a fairly legal rye, more bourbon flavors, and I think that came through in our notes. But yeah, in the adjusted list coming in, at number at eight. Eighth. And maybe it's because it tastes comfy and cozy and normal and familiar, but I think, again, coming in the top 10, to have a staple in there that is a value mm -hmm, pour, mm -hmm. it kind of just lets you know our other things what's getting above that score and what's getting below that score. And I think that might help people make decisions. Like if you're blind tasting things at home, exactly. you know, what is worth it and what isn't maybe as worth it. Mm -hmm. But overall an interesting top five or top seven, however you want to uh, look at it. Plus one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> plus one for one to grow on. But overall a, a great time blind scoring. And again, we just say blind scoring is always the best way to do it taking two people or the more people that you can have and then you average the scores, you even get a, you know, a bigger sample size. Uh, so it's just it, the, the way that we did, take all that bias out yeah. of there. And, and sometimes the things shake out to where you would say, well, you didn't do that blind. You just said, oh, I'm gonna say What's Thomas H. Popular? Andy. But a lot of times the things that have that reputation have a reputation for a reason. It's true. Yeah. And that's where we'll leave it. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to us already, 2023 is your year. You can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here. Hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more rise.